honored guests, Fremont College alumni, students, family, friends, we are honored to welcome each and every one of you to the graduation ceremony for the Fremont College class of 2012. Let's hear it for them. Very, very good. My name is Lee Page. I'm a member of the faculty at Fremont College and I will be your master of ceremonies today. The graduates will be entering and taking their seats shortly. So please rise for the processional. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Fremont College graduating class of 2012. Let's really make them feel good. Make them feel good. Don't stop now, it's their time to shine. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome the United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps who will be presenting the colors of the United States.
Everyone, please remain standing to join us for the singing of our national anthem. Please welcome Fremont College student Sharice Webb. Everyone, please remain standing during the national anthem. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. It is, with, it is with great honor and my distinct pleasure to introduce you to the Chancellor of Fremont College, Dr. Sabrina Kay. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Congratulations and welcome to our 26th commencement celebrating the graduating class of 2012. <laughs> On behalf of all of our Board of Governors, Program Advisory Committee, and our distinguished faculty and staff, thank you. I want to express my sincere congratulations to all of our graduates, and I cannot tell you how proud I am and honored to be here with you, with you today. These graduates have inspired us every day with their focus, discipline, tenacity, and desire to excel. They taught us to always move forward and to never lose a sight of our dreams. And today marks the end of our graduate journey and the beginning of a brand new one. So let's give our graduates a warm round of applause. And family and friends of our 2012 graduates, this has been your journey as well. 
your support and encouragement have been the foundation of these graduates' accomplishments. So graduates, please stand up. And now it is their turn to give you a big round of applause. To parents, spouses, partners, and friends, thank you. Thank you for being here. So please take your seat. We live in an incredibly lucky country. This is, we are just so lucky to be here. At Fremont College, we believe that the very essence of our university is the second, third, and fourth chances and the opportunity for social mobility. You, the graduates, now have that opportunity and you're ready to live that American dream. And because of our diversity, innovation, education, America provides such extraordinary opportunities to anyone who has a commitment and desire to excel. More than anywhere else in the world, maybe only in America, an adopted child from a middle-class family could create a company like Apple that changes the entire world. And some of you, a grown-up immigrant who couldn't speak English could achieve success in America in one generation without social connections or capital resources. And it only happens in America. This is America. And now, our graduates, you're ready to write your story. Before you leave today, I want you to remember two very important ingredients for success. First is your honest commitment to very, very hard work. Continue that because you've done that while you're at Fremont College. Okay. Every day you wake up, choose to work as hard as you can. You may not be the tallest, smartest, or the fastest person in the world, but you control your time and your effort. So humbly accept what God has planned for you each day and say, God, please use me. Please use me as much as I can so that I can accomplish something that is so much bigger than myself. And you've got to believe that you will accomplish something that will be a lot bigger than yourself. And you're ready to do that. And choose to work as hard as you can and give your very best every single day. And that's the first ingredient you've got to promise yourself. Okay. The second ingredient I want you to remember is faith. Believe in your God. It doesn't matter who your God is, and the religion really doesn't matter, but you must have faith. That faith in yourself and the confidence that you have for yourself is going to lead you to success. Ask yourself every day, and all of us, what should I do today to use all my talent to make a positive difference in this world? Because I know at the end, I will not fail. So repeat it every single day. What should I do every single day to use all my talent to make a positive difference in this world? Because I know at the end, it'll all work out. So the true courage is that you trust yourself to be the person that you dream of. There is no guarantee for success with your continuous commitment to hard work and your faith. Graduates, please start writing your story today and be proud to be Fremont College graduates because we certainly are so proud to be part of your life and you have been an inspiration every single day for all of our faculty, all of our staff, and all of our Board of Governors and Advisory Board members. So thank you for being here. Thank you for all your accomplishments and thank you for all of your support. Welcome and congratulations.
Thank you very much, Dr. K. We really appreciate all of your hard work and commitment to Fremont College and its graduates. It is now my distinct honor to introduce the chairman of our Board of Governors, Ambassador Frank Baxter. After being chairman and uh, exercising his, his wonderful talents as the chairman of Jeffries for many years, Ambassador Baxter now devotes his time to education reform and empowering future generations to achieve their greatest potential. His, he tirelessly serves our community by being the vice chairman of the UC Berkeley Foundation, co-chairman of the Board of, Al of Alliance for College Ready Public Schools, and board member of Hoover Institute and the I Have a Dream Foundation, which I'm sure you've heard of. Please join me in welcoming Fremont College's Chairman of the Board, Ambassador Frank Baxter. I wrote that introduction. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, so I feel such rapport with you. I've been a professional investor, I think, for about 50 years, and you're professional investors too, that the, the core of investing is delaying gratification, not spending your assets, which you're, in this case is your time and your money, et cetera, now with the hope, not the certainty, that you'll get a better re return, return in the future. And so that's what you've done, and you've created a tremendous asset, one of the best assets there is, an educated person. And so congratulations for that. And you've also picked up other assets along the way, networking, getting to know people, the faculty, fellow classmates. You've got to find that you have a, you have a part of a team that you need to keep developing, as uh, the chancellor said. I think there's another thing, asset that you have that maybe a lot of people don't realize. And that's another university. It's called the University of Life. There is, uh, recently has been a study of a very premium high school in New York City versus a high school in the inner city. And uh, the people at the premium high school had all the advantages. Uh, they had parents and family that pushed them uh, to do what they're going to do. Uh, they felt very confident that they were going to get into college and they were going to succeed in life. And most of the kids in the inner city were just the, the, just, uh, the opposite. They uh, maybe the work uh, from an immigrant family, they were certainly poor, uh, they certainly had a lot of people telling them they weren't going to make it. But they were measured, the two schools were measured on something that comes from a, a colleague of uh, Dr. K when she was at Penn State, a lady named Professor Duckworth. And she had the GRIT index. And the GRIT index is a, is a test of character. It's a character optimism people who are willing to get up after they get down, that failure is an asset rather than, than, a, than a deficit. Uh, people that have grit, that, will, that have zest, uh, and, and the people in the inner city just blew the, 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 the rich, rich ones away. And I think most of you, if not all of you, have that grit asset that, that you can, can make. And the reality is that Dr. Duckworth has found that grit trumps intelligence and it trumps talent. So you all have intelligence and talent, but I think most of you had grit, so I'm very, very optimistic about you. And the third thing that, that occurs to me, and it really came from what Dr. K had said, is that a life without a sense of service is a very unhappy life. Uh, something that was came to me, and I, you know, I started out trying to make as much money as I could and, and win and, and all that. And somewhere along, the, somewhere along the line, fortunately pretty early, somebody said that tr uh, mature ambition is not knowing what you want and how to get it. It's knowing what you have and how to give it. And that's where I learned to be, as a businessman, to be of service to our clients and my colleagues. And as a result, my firm was very, was very, very successful. I mean, it's, I assume it's a result. Whether it was or not, it's a much better path uh, than the other one of always wanting just to get for, for yourself. So I, 
I think that I'm very impressed with the investment you made, the grit you have, and the service you will give. Congratulations to you and to your family. To introduce today's keynote speaker, I am honored to welcome the newest member of the Fremont College Board of Governors, Ms. Sandy Berg. In addition to working as CEO of Ellis Paint Company, she also serves our state as a governor-appointed member of the California Air Resources Board. Her passion for helping others has been an inspiration to the board, the staff, and the faculty of Fremont College. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Sandy Berg. Good afternoon. It is my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker today. This individual has achieved the highest level of success in multiple arenas, from the playing field to the boardroom to many of your living rooms. Perhaps best known as the star of Bravo's Most Eligible Dallas, he is also the CEO of Norco Consulting and the founder of the leadership of I'm sorry, the founder of the Leadership Foundation. I had an opportunity to chat in the back before we came out here today. He is extremely passionate and very impressive in his um, passion for helping young people. Where he works to inspire inner city youth while preparing to be leaders of today, uh, tomorrow's community, his life he has committed to empowering the high potential to individuals to reach their dreams through hard work and discipline. I know that he has prepared many inspirational words of wisdom for our graduates today and words of honor and thanks to our families and friends. And with that, please welcome our keynote speaker, Matt Norgan. Hello, Fremont College. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. Everything is bigger in Texas, so we even have to raise this for you. Um, thanks for having me. Congratulations, by the way. I hear there was a bit of a selection process for who was going to be able to speak today, so I'm, I'm, I am privileged to be here. and. Uh, I hope that I can share some, some of my successes and failures that in turn help you to find what your successes will be. But I don't think I'm here specifically because I've been on television. Um, I don't think because I've uh, done some good things in football, maybe not even business, but um, like the rest of these people up here, I hope that you can uh, help find your own formula for success because everybody's is a little bit different. But if you hear from people that have been there and done it, I hope that you can help make your own uh, successes a little bit easier to find. Um, let me start off with a little story that just happened to me the other day, which I think is very, very important. Uh, and I'm not too far uh, off from the age that you guys are. So I kept trying to find, how do I get to my purpose in life? How do I get to be successful? And, and it, it's just, it's a tough thing to find. I mean, you hear the old saying, you can't see the forest through the trees. You can't, you have to get there. I'm sitting down with a gentleman that I looked up to my entire life, you know, 60s, 70s, um, has amassed an, a, an amazing wealth um, in all areas of his life. And I found myself, every time I sit with him, all I wanted to do is figure out how he got there. You know, I just, it, I didn't care about anything else. I just wanted to achieve that level of success. And one day, just a few weeks ago, in fact, he, I was sitting down with him and he said, hold on, man. Um, he goes, you know what? If I feel like all you ever want to do is be me, but he goes, I want to be you. And I thought, well, why would that be? Everybody I know in their right mind would want to be where you are right now. And he said, no, because what young people forget is they forget the most important thing in life, which is time. You never get time back and you have to invest yourself wisely. And he goes, I give up the last 40 years of my life and all the things that I've been able to do to go back and do it all over again. And that made me think, wow, Time is important and don't give it away when you're young. You don't know where you're going to go, but make sure you value every minute of your life. And I promise you, if you live with a purpose, you'll get where you're supposed to be. Don't waste your time.
Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, is I played football, and uh, I don't know if you guys saw the game, but I played at the University of Texas, and we competed against USC in 2006, and uh, yeah, I know, right? We got a lot of USC fans here. <laughs> but the, it was very important to bring this up because that particular year we went undefeated and we went down in the history as one of these great, great teams and USC did it the year before. But I wanted to talk a little bit about that experience and what it meant, the sense of belonging and the difference between the value of being a part of a great team versus being a part of just a bunch of guys that are really good at something. This is one of the biggest things for me going forward because I noticed that when people would ask, what was the difference? How did you guys win a national championship? How did you guys achieve that level of success? What was the difference between all the teams you had before? The only thing I could point to was the fact that we were a team. We worked together. We came from a great university, just like you guys are right now. You're sitting amongst a bunch of great individuals. You're going to go out and you're going to have a career in business. You're going to be around a lot of great people. But if you want to make the difference, you want to take it over the top, you want to win a national championship, you have to all do it together. And that's what we didn't do in our first four years of having the exact same caliber of an athlete. We didn't figure out how to put it all together, how to work together as a team, how to pick up another guy when one guy was down. That's what teamwork's about. That's how you're going to find success. And I encourage you to look back at this university that gave you these tools. Look at these classmates here. Don't take it lightly. These, these are the types of people you win with. Learn how to do it as a team. Don't do it as an individual, and you'll find a much higher level of success. Um, I want to do a couple things as well. I want to talk about some examples. I'm a guy that is, I'm a tangible type individual. I need to understand where someone has failed and where they've succeeded to really find out how, how to do that in my own life. Um, the one thing I want to tell you right now is that if you can find a path with no obstacles, it probably doesn't lead anywhere you want to go. I promise you that. Life is not easy. Don't expect it to be. Because the things that are <laughs> worth achieving aren't easy. And um, if you can over overcome those, you'll get where you want to go. Um, one of the mistakes I always made, I just tried to do things too fast. Uh, and, and life, as I've gotten older, I, I remember um, just going through meetings in business and in football and not even be able to remember what it was about. But as I've gotten older, I've started to feel more deeply and take my time with things. And I think that I've learned more from them. I've become a better business person, uh, a better family man, because I've taken the time to invest myself in things uh, more deeply than I did on a service level before. That would be what was my greatest failure as a young person. Uh, so if that, if that is of any help to you, um, here's another quote that I think that I, I, I carry with me all the time. We are, what we, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. And so you have to get yourself in a habit of doing great things. Once you can get into a habit of it, you'll have a much better chance to be successful as well. Um, you know, I, wanted, I wrote down 10 things that I, I feel like are very important for success. And I'm just going to go through them really quickly because I've heard a, you know, Dr. K is, is really said a bunch of things that I wanted to in a much more concise uh, speech. But uh, for me, here's 10 things in my life that I think really help to get to a level of success. One, get up. Some, it's funny, but you know, sometimes the hardest part of the day is just getting out of bed. Get up. Get there. You know, it, it, honestly, right? I mean, how many times did you not want to get up for class, but you did? Get up. Get there. Um, it, it, it can be the hardest part of the day. Number, number nine, dress up. We used to say in football that if you, feel, if you look good and you feel good, you're probably going to play good, right? So I think that dress the part. Be who it is you want to be. Uh, and I think you'll find yourself getting there a lot quicker. And people will see you as that person. Fill up. For me, it's very important to eat right and put the right things in your body. Garbage in, garbage out, I promise you. You start to realize that as your metabolism slows down the older you get, but start when you're young. Fill up the right way, I promise it'll help. Uh, build up, confidence, grow, continue to grow. Continue to build on who you are as a person. 
Store up. Learn from successful people. Keep storing great things you hear. Take the best things about people as you go through life and try to emulate that in your own life. Not everybody sitting up here is going to be exactly who you want to be, but if you can take bits and pieces, ultimately you'll create the best person for you. So that's what I've always tried to do. Uh, look up. I don't know what your faith is, but I think it's important to realize there's a greater cause out there and accept some of those things. Uh, look up to people you, you believe in. Look up to whoever your God is. Fess up. It's okay to be wrong. Confess your faults to one another. Everybody has them. It's okay to fail. You heard this just a second ago. Failure ultimately makes the things that, that you achieve feel better. It's okay to fail. Don't be afraid of failing. Someone told me one time that um, the only thing worse than a bad decision is indecision. Make decisions and live with them. That's the only way you're going to learn. Stoke up. Be passionate about what you're doing. Be passionate. Give up. Put aside your ego to be number one for others. Lastly, lift up. Lift up people around you. Lift up whoever your Lord is. Praise your Lord. Um, and I think that leads right into where I'm going to end this with. And that is what I consider to be the most important message uh, of, of any message that can be delivered. I started with time being important. I want you guys to all realize how important love is in your life. Um, if you're a person of, uh, of Christianity or if you, if you believe in the Bible, you know the two most important things in the Bible are love your God and love your neighbor. And love is the, the key word on both of those. Okay? And I, and I bring out the word love because... It doesn't just apply to your God and your neighbor, but where you came from. Love your university. Love your family. If you really want to get somewhere in life, you got to love what you do and love the people that are around you. And let me tell you how to do that. I've come up with three ways that I feel like you can ultimately, genuinely love things in your life. You have to rid your life of things that master you. You know, these, these can be any drugs, alcohol, cancerous people. You can't be mastered by something else if you truly want to master love in your life. If you want to give love, if you want to love your work, you want to love your institution, your college, you want to love your family, you want to love your wife or your husband, don't let anything else master you but the things in life that matter the most. Number two, create margin in your life. There's going to be error. You can't prepare for everything. Create a little margin in there and, you know, if, if you're supposed to spend time with your family and you're at work a couple extra hours, well, create margin for that. Find other ways to love your family. If you, if you move to another city and you don't get a chance to come back to Fremont, you want to create that margin. Find time to come back and give back to the institution that gave you what you have. Create margin in your life and you will find a much higher success and you'll find how to love. Lastly, you have to forgive. You have to forgive to really love. People make mistakes. Make sure you forgive those you love and you will find, if you follow these three steps, you will know what love is, and you'll be a much happier person. Let me end with this quote. Do what you love. Surround yourself with people who know more than you do. Build a dream team. Be humble, kind, and open, and the world is yours. Thank you. I'm just an inch or two shorter, so I need uh, a little less mic, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, we'd now like to continue our ceremony with recognition of a special group of graduates who have not only excelled academically, which isn't easy when you're a working adult, but they've excelled academically and demonstrated strong character, positive attitude, and involvement in the campus community. It's very difficult to do all of these things and have a job and have children and have family. And if anybody out there knows what I'm talking about, you can just wave your hand and say, oh yeah. Yeah, I thought you'd see it my way. <laughs> we will now recognize the 2012 Fremont College Valedictorians. 
To honor our paralegal studies valedictorian, please welcome Tom Levin, former mayor of Beverly Hills and partner at Christensen and Glazer as he presents Fremont College's paralegal studies valedictorian. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to be here and to give this award. And I had asked Dr. K if I could be the one to give the valedictorian award. And she said, why do you want to give this specific award? And I said, because I've never met anyone who's had a 4.0 GPA. And this is what the legal studies paralegal valedictorian has. Now, it's it's best to hear it from her in her own words, but we would like to honor, and it's my privilege to honor, Deanne Gilmore with the Fremont College 2012 Paralegal Studies Valedictorian Award. Good afternoon. Chancellor Kay, yeah. honored guests, esteemed members of the Fremont faculty and staff, and the fellow members of the class of 2012. In November of 2010, the company that I worked for notified me that they would be closing down the fitness club in which I served as manager and fitness director. I was given one month to close down the club lay off the staff, all 50 members, including myself, find new places for everyone to go, all the members, and yes, I had to give my own self my final paycheck on New Year's Eve. Fortunately for me, at this point in my life, I had the financial means to take some time to be able to sit back, breathe, reflect, evaluate if the fitness industry still held my interest. During my teenage years, I yearned to follow in the footsteps of my grandfather and my uncle and enter the legal profession. I became totally enthralled at the prospect while attending my uncle's robing ceremony when he first became a judge. Over the years, I've discussed with our family friend Bob Winky, well, Judge Robert Winky, the pride I felt when he slipped the robe over my uncle's shoulders. It was, I was mesmerized. On the way home in the car, I excitedly announced to my parents that I was going to go to law school. My mother's response, women in our family do not do that. Women in our family are teachers or nurses. I looked to my father. He always stuck by me. My father's response was, a courtroom is a man's world. Who's going to protect you there? So I did what any other female would do. I became a ballet dancer. <laughs> that was OK. After dance, I entered marketing, and though I had a very successful career, I just didn't have the passion for it. Next, I segued into fitness. Again, I had much success, but very little passion. So although the thought of going back to school at my age really scared me to death, in May of 2011, I began my classes at Fremont in a career I had wished for decades before, full of trepidation. How would I compete with the kids? With the encouragement of my friends, family, and the invaluable support and assistance of everyone at Fremont College, I am now graduating with a 4.0 grade point average. And I, <laughs> and I stand before you as the valedictorian of the paralegal program. May we all continue to reach for the stars, live out our dreams, and follow our passions as we go forward into the world as graduates of Fremont College. Thank you. Very, very good. Congratulations. Please welcome Dr. Mark Young, Professor of Accounting and George Bozanik and Holman G. Hurt Chair at the University of Southern California as he presents Fremont College's 
Business Program Valedictorian. Thank you very much. Um, it's really a distinct honor to be here today to present this award. The valedictorian of the business program this year demonstrated tremendous commitment to the college. She achieved great personal academic success as well as serving Fremont College as a student ambassador. As an ambassador, she volunteered at multiple college events and brought her positive attitude to brighten everyone's day. On a personal note, I should say that I've been a, a professor for 30 plus years now. I've known a number of valedictorians. And the valedictorians come in all shapes and sizes. They come from diverse backgrounds. It's very difficult to predict who will be a valedictorian and who won't. But across all of the valedictorians that I have met, I've had the privilege to know, there's one driving characteristic that binds them all together. And that really is an unbelievable level of self-determination and the ability to work extremely hard every single day. Uh, this year's valedictorian in business is no exception to that. It's my great pleasure that I introduce to you the 2012 business program valedictorian, Caitlin Beasley. I've always had a fear of falling, much like my nervousness walking up these stairs today in six inch heels. But Fremont College has taught me that it is okay to fall as long as you always get back on your feet. My name is Caitlin Beasley and I am humbled by this honor. Two years ago I imagined this day, but I didn't imagine myself standing up here in front of all of you. Thanks to Fremont, I am able to say that I am a strong, smart, and independent woman, as opposed to the teenager I was before. The ancient Greek philosopher Socrates once said, education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. Fremont has completely changed the way that I view my ability to succeed. Before Fremont, I didn't believe that I would ever be a college graduate. It wasn't because I didn't have the potential, it was because I was too afraid to try. My fear of falling kept me from realizing my true self. This school has given me a hunger for learning that is never ending and I couldn't be more appreciative. The core experience of Fremont College is a sense of family that this school has as a whole. Whether a student's passion is law, business, design, or wellness, Fremont isn't just a school, it's a home. During my time here, my classmates at Fremont became my family and my teachers became my mentors. My Fremont family made me feel reassured that if I were to ever stumble, I would not feel alone. On behalf of my classmates, I want to thank the Fremont College administrators and faculty. You motivated us to keep attending class day after day, even when we were tired or wanted to give up. I especially want to thank Mr. Title, Mr. T. <laughs> you made the business program a wonderful experience and I am forever grateful to have, you, have had you as a mentor. I also want to thank Chris Lim for facilitating the Student Ambassador Program, which I had the honor of participating in. On behalf of my classmates, I would also like to thank our parents and families for supporting us while we pursued our college educations. I would like to leave my classmates with one message. We will never know the ends of our stories or exactly where we, where we will be today, tomorrow, or a year from now. But we must always remember that we made it this far by being determined and resilient. These are two qualities that will never go out of style. I hope that you're all proud of yourselves because I know that the people in this room are. Class of 2012, congratulations. Congratulations, Caitlin. Now to honor our design program valedictorian, please welcome Guntha, Guntha Shia, pageant recruiter of Miss USA pageant, as he presents the Fremont College design program valedictorian. Thank you very much. The, valedict the valedictorian of the college of the college's design program earned a perfect 4.0 grade point average in all her courses. She's a hardworking, creative individual with both the talent 
and the persistence to face and overcome challenges. She has pursued fashion for her entire life, even designing clothes for her Barbie at age seven. <laughs> Committed to learning something new every day, her instructors refer to her as the student every teacher dreams of having. Our creativity is just one factor in being a successful designer. There are a lot of other features. You have to master finance, otherwise you'll go bankrupt after your third shipment. You have to know about marketing. You have to understand manufacturing. You have to know about logistics. What's that? That's getting the product that you have made to where it needs to go, passing all of the examinations along the way, customs, etc. You have to be hardworking. Now, the question is, how can you have all of that? You can't master it all. This college places great emphasis in making sure our design program is well-rounded and prepares you as much as it can but we can't get you to master it. So if I were to think of something that would distinguish the designer that almost made it and the designer that did succeed, it would be this last skill. And this is one I'd admonish everybody to think about. We like to hang around the people just like us. Designers like to be with designers. We like to be in our comfort zone. But networking goes beyond just shaking hands at parties. It means you will reach out to other people who are not like you, who have those skills, who are comfortable with finance. It means that you will reach out to talk to somebody, to make friends with those nerds who work in logistics, whatever that skill may be. That's something that I'd like you to have fresh in your mind and keep that all the time because nobody succeeds alone in business today, much less in design. And with that, let's offer our congratulations to the 2012 Design Program Valedictorian, Fatime Nicholas. Good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor to speak before you today on behalf of my fellow graduates. <sighs> to our chancellor, our faculty and friends, our family, thank you for all the kindness, the support, and the beautiful memories that you all have shared with us throughout this journey. I would like to start off this message with a quote from a former NFL quarterback and Hall of Famer, Steve Young. He said, the principle is competing against yourself. It is about self-improvement, about being better than you were the day before. I remember when I first attended Fremont's orientation, I was so nervous to the point of stuttering. I did not have a clue where these enrollments will lead me, questioning myself if I will be able to survive this whole school year. My mind was abuzz with all the what-ifs possible. School started, I did not know what to expect of it. I was still experiencing culture shock. Because at that time, it has only been six months since I moved to America. My family migrated here after I graduated from high school. I did not speak English that much, and in front of English-speaking people, which is like everyone here, <laughs> all I could do is smile and say hi. <laughs> Fremont being a welcoming place and having an open community helped me to express myself. This also contributed to bringing out the best in me in such a short period of time. My classmates and I got to know each other. We had lively fashion classes with Sebastian. We supported each other during our design challenges with Coco. We did not let each other down during our class critics and we had fun field trips with Nano. Looking back at those moments, I can really say that today's little moments become our tomorrow's precious memories. Here I am today, standing proudly, and not hiding behind this podium, saying that I am better than the day I was before. 
I am thankful for all the friends I have made and for the stellar professors we have met along this journey who pushed us to our limit and who got us out of our own little boxes. Living this life is like a joyride. It does not matter much where you're going. What matters more is you decide to get on it and you enjoy every moment of it. We took Fremont's route. We learned how to be passionate. We were taught to be open to new things, even if it's not our own thing. We arrived at a better place, a place where we can be ourselves, where we can express our creativity, where we are able to give our best shot each day, a place better than where we were yesterday. To all my fellow graduates, one of our goals has been achieved today. Let us put ourselves out there in the real world without fear. Continue dreaming new dreams and do all that we can do each day to live our lives without regrets. Live like there's no tomorrow. Thank you. My congratulations again. Now to honor our wellness program valedictorian, please welcome Ken Virgin. CEO of iPayables. Ken couldn't make it, so I am stepping into his shoes. My name is Robert Strauss, and I am here to present the Sports and Rehabilitation Valedictorian. This is a student who achieved a perfect 4.0 but probably his greatest achievement was his willingness to help his other students. This is a person who would come in, stay after class, come in on his days off, and he was always trying to lift up his fellow students. Being the valedictorian with a perfect 4.0 is a great honor, and it will allow him to get his first job. But in my experience, it will be his willingness to help others that he has demonstrated here at Fremont that will allow him to keep it. It is my honor to present the 2012 valedictorian in sports and rehabilitation to Harold Parker. Good afternoon. I am honored to have the privilege of addressing you as valedictorian of the class of 2012. On behalf of the 2012 graduates of the wellness program at Fremont College, I would like to extend our sincere thanks to our Chancellor, Dr. K, to Dean Aco, to the Fremont faculty and staff, and to the friends and family that have supported us throughout this journey. It is truly worth noting that without the help and support of each and every one of you, this day would not have been possible. I would personally like to thank my fellow classmates for their help and encouragement, and also commend their persistence and courage in realizing this accomplishment. We each entered the wellness program with hopes, dreams, and fears. We came from diverse backgrounds and life experiences. Many of us were recently out of high school, and some, like me, had not been in a classroom for many years, wondering if we'd be up to the task. The common thread among us all was an innate desire to help people. This desire to help was a characteristic that resonated from each of us throughout our time at Fremont. It is safe to say that as a group, we understand that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. One of our primary objectives as wellness professionals is to help people feel better. My educational experience at Fremont was awesome. It reignited my passion for learning and inspired me to consistently work hard and put forth my very best effort. 
the closeness that developed with my classmates and the way in which we all helped and looked out for each other was a beautiful experience that will forever be remembered. The support from Fremont as a whole in continually seeking out and addressing issues that would improve our access to knowledge, our comfort in the environment, and the quality of our education was exceptional. It is written in Proverbs that in teaching others, we teach ourselves. I applaud and thank Fremont for incorporating concepts in which we as students were able to teach and learn from each other. As we move forward to the next phase of our lives, we are confident that Fremont College has provided us the platform for developing our greatest abilities. Because as John F. Kennedy profoundly stated, in each of us, there is a private hope and dream. If fulfilled, can be translated into benefit for everyone. In closing, I want to acknowledge how special the friendships that were forged during my time here are to me. Great friends are hard to find. They are difficult to leave, and they are impossible to forget. The next chapter of our lives will benefit from the educational and life experiences we have received at Fremont College and will help us progress in the direction of our dreams. I will leave you with a quote from John B. Go. If you want to succeed in the world, you must make your own opportunities as you go on. The man who waits for the seventh wave to come and toss him onto dry land will find that seventh wave is a long time in coming. You can create, commit no greater folly than to sit by the roadside until someone comes along and invites you to ride with him to wealth or influence. I ask that we all live with intention, practice wellness, and do what we love. Thank you. We will now be awarding the Fremont College Spirit Award. And to present that, the Spirit Award is Michelle Manu, Trial Division Supervisor of Nationwide Insurance. Good afternoon, thank you for having me. The Spirit Award is given to the graduate that best demonstrates extraordinary loyalty, commitment, and dedication and service with the goal of building spirit to support her fellow students here at Fremont College. This graduate has demonstrated spirit in every sense of the word. As a single mother with four children, she faces numerous daily challenges, but has never allowed these challenges to affect her outstanding attitude and leadership towards her fellow students. At Fremont College, she has developed an incredible love for lifelong learning and has already started to pursue her master's degree. Please join us in celebrating the achievement of our 2012 Spirit Award recipient, Melva Jolly. Congratulations, Melva. The final award for this afternoon is the Instructor's Choice Award. Now presenting uh, our Instructor's Choice Award will be Russell Fry, owner of Russell Fry Design. Hi, I want to thank you all for having me today. I'm honored to be here and to give this award. The Instructor's Choice Award recognizes the graduate who has attained significantly, who has attained distinction by demonstrating exceptional leadership in the classroom, significantly contributing to creating a positive classroom environment and assisting fellow students to succeed. This student exemplifies positivity at Fremont College. 
Never seen without a smile, and despite working full-time at a law firm during the program and participating in the San Bernardino Paralegal Association, he always took the time to help out his fellow classmates. Every instructor counted themselves fortunate to have him in their classroom. The 2012 Instructor's Choice Award goes to Victor Barajas. Congratulations, Victor, on the Instructor's Choice Award. The ceremony will now continue with what you've all been waiting for. Do you know what I'm talking about? For those candidates receiving Associate of Art degrees in Paralegal Studies, would you please rise and proceed to the stage where you'll be presented your degree by our Dean of Paralegal Studies of the Paralegal Studies Program, Arlene Melconian. These are my kids right here, I love them. As they prepare to receive their awards, their degrees, I should say. While they line up to, to be presented, how about a nice round of applause one more time for all of our graduates. A well-deserved round of applause because this has not been easy. Many of our graduates have family and friends to, to care for in addition to their, their studies, so this is a well-deserved honor to all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Paul Egley, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, summa cum laude, and he's a student ambassador. Latoya Hudson. Associate of Arts and Paralegal Studies. Amber McDougall, Associate of Arts and Paralegal Studies, summa cum laude. Diana Hernandez. Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. Jordan Peacher, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, summa cum laude. And Student Ambassador. Noel Proctor, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, Summa Cum Laude and Student Ambassador. <laughs> Natasha Sidnor, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Eduardo Hernandez, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. Justine Godoy, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. Alicia Ross, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, summa cum laude, and Student Ambassador. Ketja Veliz. Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. Silva Valise, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, summa cum laude. Brian Breeze, 
Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies and Summa Cum Laude. Carmen, Carmen Vela, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. Harold Baltazar, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, Summa Cum Laude. Sky Kim, Diploma in Paralegal Studies. Tammy Sarabia, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, Summa Cum Laude and Student Ambassador. Sonia Felix, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. Alexandria Myers, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, Summa Cum Laude. Sharice Johnson, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, Summa Cum Laude. Tommy Palacios, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. Felisa Chavez, Summa Cum Laude in Paralegal Studies, Associate of Arts degree. Fernando Pedroza, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. Nicole Bogues Taylor, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies and Summa Cum Laude. Desiree Barajas, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies. April Carnes, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, Summa Cum Laude. Deanne Gilmore, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, magna cum laude. Victor Barajas, Associate of Arts degree in Paralegal Studies, summa cum laude. Mayan Assis, Associate of Arts degree in Design Interpretation, Summa Cum Laude. Margarita Jimenez, Associate of Arts degree in Design Interpretation, Summa Cum Laude. Jasmine Bai, Associate of Arts degree in Design Interpretation, Summa Cum Laude. Catherine Dominguez, Associate of Arts degree in Design Interpretation, Summa Cum Laude. Laura Rubacalva, Associate of Arts in Design Interpretation. Ashley Kim, Associate of Arts degree in Design Interpretation, Summa Cum Laude. Daniel Rubio, Associate of Arts degree in Design Interpretation. Fatima Nicholas, Associate of Arts degree in Design Interpretation, magna cum laude. <laughs> Susan Kampstra, Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership. Eileen Fay, Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership, Summa Cum Laude. Carol Hidalgo, Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership, Summa Cum Laude. Heather Medina, Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership, Summa Cum Laude. Sandy Q. Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership, Summa Cum Laude. 
Linda Potts, Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership, summa cum laude. Alice Jones, Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership, summa cum laude. Tina Levette Robinson, Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership. Melva Jolly, Bachelor of Arts in Business Leadership. Perla Castro, Associate of Arts in Business Administration. Pejman Agazade, Kishan. Associate of Arts and Business Administration, summa cum laude, and Student Ambassador. <laughs> Tiffany Cox, Associate of Arts and Business Administration, summa cum laude. <laughs> Caitlin Beasley, Associate of Arts and Business Administration, summa cum laude, Student Ambassador. Ramon Restudent Ambassador Reyes, Associate of Arts and Business Administration, summa cum laude, and Student Ambassador. Angie Garcia, Associate of Arts and Business Administration, summa cum laude. Michael Huerta, Associate of Arts and Business Administration. Patrick Johnson, Diploma in Massage Therapy. <laughs> Ricardo Gomez, Associate of Arts in Massage Therapy. Eliana Orozco, Diploma in Massage Therapy. Christina Tutoro, Justina Tutoro, Dip Diploma in Massage Therapy. Congratulations. Tessa Henry, Diploma in Massage Therapy. Tasha Page, Diploma in Massage Ther Therapy, Summa Cum Laude in the Wellness Program. Walter Sanchez, Diploma in Massage Therapy. Rigoberto Albertano Salazar, Diploma in Massage Therapy. Brianne Roberts Ramirez, Diploma in Massage Therapy, Cum Laude. Romel Ramirez, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy, Summa Cum Laude. Jose Castillo, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehab Therapy, Summa Cum Laude. Joanne Wren, Sports Rehabilitation Associate of Arts Degree. Jolanda Johnson, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy and Student Ambassador. Shannon Flores, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Jessica Jimenez, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. John Lee, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Isidro Parra, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Liliana Usuebio, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. 
CJ Pitchy, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Robert Lopez, Associate of Arts in Sports and Rehabilitation Therapy. Lamont G. Bowers, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Tommy Johnson, Sports Rehabilitation Therapy, Associate of Arts. <laughs> Rose Armstead, Associate of Science, Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Erica Knowles, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, sir. Luisa Heras Medina, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Jose Castagnon, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Jane Lee Rodriguez, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Kayla Miller, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy, summa cum laude. Thank you. One more right here. Candace Tack, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Congratulations. Thank you. Jesus Montoya, Associate Degree in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Jose Lopez, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Andre Wallace, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Keep, keep, okay. Camden Katajima, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Miguel Angel Sanchez, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Edward Lano, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Melanie May Abraula, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Jesse Estrada Jr., Associate of Science and Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Melody Knight, Associate of Science and Sports Rehabilitation Therapy, magna cum laude. Rihanna Thomas, Associate of Science and Sports Rehabilitation, summa cum laude. Isaac Mino. Sports Rehabilitation Therapy, Associate of Science. Summa Cum Laude. RJ De La Cruz, Associate of Science and Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Romel De La Cruz. Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Erica Nicole Cruz. Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Back to title. Jessica Rojas. Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Johanna Pedro. Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Rashid Knox, Associate of Science, Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Thank you. Richard Guthrie, Associate of Science and Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Janet Reynoso, Associate of Science and Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Margo Mew. Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy.
Barbie Saldana, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Ruben Arianes, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Steven Fagundes, Associate of Arts in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Fidel Salvatierra, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Marco Salvatierra, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Kyle Amoroso, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. Israel Saldana, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation and Student Ambassador. Joseph Swapaya, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy and Summa Cum Laude. Kevin Toma, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy, Summa Cum Laude. Harold Parker, Associate of Science in Sports Rehabilitation Therapy. I would now like to ask the Chancellor and CEO, Dr. Sabrina Kay, and Francisco Varela, Dean of Academic Affairs, to come to the podium to confer the degrees and diplomas. Will the graduates please rise? authority vested in me, by virtue of the authority vested in me by Fremont College and State of California, I hereby confer upon you the degree and diploma for which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities there to attach. Graduates, please move your tassel from left to right. Fantastic! As if the energy isn't high enough, family and friends, family and friends, and, and family members, please allow me to present to you the Fremont College graduating class of 2012! Is it not fantastic? Fantastic. You will, have a, you will have an opportunity in a few moments to celebrate with your graduates. But for now, alumni, students, family and friends, we ask that you please remain seated until after the graduating class of 2012 has done their recessional and the recessional concludes. I would like to personally thank everyone 
who has helped make this day possible, all the Fremont College administrators, staff, and faculty, and from the bottom of my heart to my students, job well done. Please remain seated until the graduates have exited. Please remain seated until the graduates have exited. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for them! I can't hear you! Make them feel good! Hugs all around! Straight, straight, there you go. All the best to all of these graduates who are going forward in their new careers. The best of luck to all of them. They're going, I know they're going to be successful. Thank you all for joining us today for the Fremont College graduation. They feel good! All right, bro. If you see somebody you love, say yeah. There's going to be a party tonight. Please remain seated until the graduates have exited the auditorium. Thank you so much. And as the last of our graduates exit the auditorium, ladies and gentlemen, one last time for the graduating class of Fremont College 2012. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon.